Hi guys, uh, you are here with another uh, webinar session conducted by Nyanyang Technology and I'm Sarah Zanayake. I'm a software engineer at Nyanyang Technology and I'm here to explain about how to manage your person's components using Vices. So let's get started then. Well, when it comes to the uh, line up today, we are having interaction to white source. Probably you don't know what is white source, so I'm here to explain about the white source and its uh, products as well. So the main product is uh, the white source core, so I'm going to explain it as well. And uh, uh, I'm going to also explain the how to integrate white source into the Azure DevOps. So I'm going to explain best practice as well. So in that case, I have just uh, gone through so many scenarios in the practical scenarios. So I have to explain. Uh, um, the actual scenarios that I have been through, so that that is that could be very valuable for you to uh, know what is actually white source. And uh, I'm going to explain its free version as well. So it's called Vault, and it could uh, be integrated into GitHub. And I'm going to explain how I'm going to demonstrate how you could actually integrate it. And uh, there will be a Q&A session. If you if you are keen on having some questions towards me, then uh, I'm here to explain. So yeah, let's get started. So the problem is that uh, wh how, what's the reason to use Vitos, right? So uh, in your organization or in your actually personal case, you may have in so many open source components in your uh, repository, and then uh, it will be hard for you to manage every open source component because of the fact that you may have some audits and uh, you may have other factors such as uh, vulnerabilities, I quest. So in that case, uh, it's really hard to manage uh, lots and lots of open source components. Uh, so it, if in, in a particular audit cycle you may have to write spreadsheets like emails and billing systems, but uh, in this sense uh, you don't have to go through that stuff. Uh, the white source manages it very well, and you could actually provide that as evidence as well. So uh, when it comes when it comes to the interaction, so uh, it's actually a software composition analysis tool. It means that uh, uh, it could be uh, integrated into your build pipeline or in your uh, I mean uh, the GitHub as well. So uh, it is founded in 2011 and it's in the USA, it got in the USA and the main investors are from the Microsoft Ventures. It is actually uh, a funding uh, firm for the startups and uh, Susquehanna Growth Equity and its main product is White Source Core that I'm actually uh, talking deep into it today. So uh, what actually White Source does? So it detects, selects, alerts and reports. Uh, any vulnerability or any uh, library related thing that you could ever imagine and uh, when it comes to detection uh, it actually cross refreshing your open source uh, components against white source definitive database and uh, in that sense uh, you could uh, actually re uh, have the reliability uh, where they have so many uh, com uh, composed uh, databases and uh, they will get gather data from gather and extract data from that particular databases so you don't have to worry about the reliability so in, when it comes to selection, selection is totally based on a Chrome extension that it supports. So all you have to do is just inst install the Chrome extension and it will manage uh, uh, every uh, pre-development uh, uh, code components that you are integrating. So as an example, I could say that uh, when you are browsing through Stack Overflow, memory repository or NuGet uh, package repository, you will, you will uh, come up with so many library related codes such as dependencies. So in that case, uh, white source uh, real time scans it, the code itself, and then provide you with the relevant data like uh, licenses, uh, license, compliance issues, or wallet issues. So it is a really convenient product. So, and uh, when it comes to alerting, uh, alerting is based on real time alerting, and uh, of course, you will get an email or any other thing that you define in the white source uh, dashboard. Uh, so you will get uh, alerts if you have vulnerabilities or license compliance issues regarding your particular organization that you have. So or, and the every uh, rule that you have defined. And when it comes to reporting, reporting is uh, uh, very reliable because uh, since it has so many databases, like the National Vulnerability Database from the USA, and it's a standard in the vulnerability database. Uh, uh, actually, uh, the, it's actually a standard in the vulnerability database uh, analysis. So in that case, uh, it provides much more reliable and an effective manner, and it's very convenient to do that. So, what is white source core? I've already told you this. Uh, this white source core is the main product, and it's a paid product. So it detects open source components and it analyzes, and uh, if there are any anomalies, it will uh, 
reporting back to you. So uh, it it capable of uh, detecting the vulnerable components and the compliance issues. So you may be wondering how White Source actually works. So in the background, it works like uh, I'll explain from the Unified Agent itself. So the Unified Agent is uh, actually a JAR file which you could uh, actually execute from your end, and uh, all you have to do is just uh, pass some parameters, uh, the relevant parameters, and then it's like API key, uh, project name, product name. So likewise, you have to execute from your own end, and then it will process your uh, and analyze and process uh, uh, your particular source files, such as open source components, and uh, it will generate particular checksums. And based on the checksums, it will uh, uh, redirect back to their white source server, send it back to their white source server, and white source server will process it and then display it uh, an informative manner where you could actually uh, get some uh, more feedback, like uh, descriptive feedback, right? So yeah, so if there are any anomalies, uh, it will report it like to your email, like this. So these are the two components that you have to uh, uh, have to uh, get uh, comfort with. The thing is that there's something called unified agent as I talked earlier, and there's something called unified agent configuration file. So those things are integrated with each other, and uh, the unified agent configuration file has uh, so many properties defined, like the API key, uh, include file types, excludes, and uh, body call, the, uh, see, uh, body call, the product name, project name, and the white source URL. So it, it's really handy uh, to maintain a repository using that particular configuration of file. But there are some kind of constraints as well. I'll talk that in the best practices uh, section. So I'll have that slide later. And uh, of course, uh, this particular uh, white source, the, uh, the config file, looks like this. So you could uh, get an idea how it uh, works and how it looks uh, just by uh, looking at the snapshot that I provided. So this is the web client that the white source provide, white source core provides, and uh, this is uh, actually exposed to lots of users as you define, as the administrator defines it, and uh, anyone could uh, view, manage, and export the results. Uh, so in that case, uh, as you can see, there are some library section, license analysis and vulnerability analysis reports available. And of course, you could uh, export any of, any, of, uh, any of these data to an Excel sheet or a JSON file or XML file based on your uh, preference. Because uh, in the audit cycles, we had to provide Excel sheets like this. So this is really handy and this does the thing in real time as you commit the code. So you have the freedom to override uh, any settings you want, the descriptions you want, the licenses you want. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, so when it comes to alert report, uh, so uh, I have provided you a snapshot of uh, the security vulnerabilities, some of the security vulnerabilities that my uh, test project has. And uh, well, as you can see, there are so many vulnerabilities defined uh, with the description itself. So if you can uh, focus uh, into the jQuery 1.11.3 NoGuard package uh, row, so you will uh, figure it out that uh, there are uh, medium, three medium vulnerabilities. So if you can uh, click on that particular detail section, you will be redirected into this page and uh, what it says. So as you can see, uh, as I pointed out from the first uh, arrow, uh, uh, vulnerability ID column, on the vulnerability ID column, there are many uh, IDs that they have defined. And there's something called CBS, uh, CBE, and uh, of course, uh, it is coming from the uh, National Vulnerability Database, and uh, there's something called WS, the prefix WS, and uh, uh, it means that uh, it is actually uh, manipulated by what you call the white source uh, search team. So you are clean two birds at once, and uh, it's really handy for you to try it out because these uh, uh, particular descriptions and the top fixes are very reliable, and they are being checked by so many uh, experts in the industry. And of course, you could see the CVSS 2 and 3 score. So that's, uh, that's easy for you to uh, make prior address based on the uh, uh, CVS score. So when it comes to license management, uh, you could actually automate your open source software process just by making some rules in the white source uh, administrative uh, view. So in here, I have defined that we should reject the GPL because of the fact that uh, I'm working in a closed source uh, project. So since it's not open source, uh, I have defined to uh, reject GPLs because of the fact that uh, we have to uh, reject the, uh, if you are using the GPL license, 
we have to make the uh, open source, make our repository open source, so that may, may not happen for our closed source proprietary code. So that's why I have defined the GPL license restriction. And if uh, any of our developers are actually making a commit to the repository, so uh, it, this will analyze uh, the, the licenses and actually it rejects if anything happens. So yeah, so in that case, uh, it, this is really handy. And this could be actually provided uh, as an evidence for the recycle because we are actually enforcing these things uh, in the product, uh, the development pipeline. So, yeah, that's it. And uh, uh, this is a fun part, and uh, I'm going to talk about how to uh, integrate this Asia uh, report in the uh, Asia DevOps uh, extension that the Vitals provides. So this is uh, this could be actually get from the uh, Visual Studio Marketplace, and as you can see in the snapshot, uh, you could get it free. But the thing is, uh, this is Vitals score. So Vitals score actually a paid product, but you could get this free, and you have to define the API key. So in that sense, uh, this isn't uh, free when it comes to the actual scenario. But I will actually explain how to get, uh, use the white source, another product for white source board. So it, that is actually free. So uh, just wait a second, yeah, wait some minutes, and I'll explain how, how it works. And this is white source go, and uh, this provides basic functionality. Uh, the, this ex extension provides basic functionality. And uh, this particular extension doesn't need to have uh, a CLI task. Omen CLI task because uh, it is a particular uh, app provided by the uh, white source and uh, this has less customizable options and this what what it does is that uh, it will analyze uh, the repository and then send back the checksums back to their servers to process it. So uh, in the actual use, uh, use case uh, in our project uh, we have uh, so many uh, advanced uh, integrations. So in that sense, I had to append the particular folder result back to the servers because uh, we had so many uh, uh, incompatibilities with our uh, particular repository. So we have to go through and uh, diagnose what, what, what went wrong and then append the results. So in that sense, uh, this particular extension is not, could not be used for that advanced scenarios. So I'm going to explain how to use, uh, how to uh, integrate your uh, integrate the white source into your DevOps pipeline uh, using the advanced method. So all I have to do is just create uh, CLI, some CLI SAR tasks. So as you can see in the snapshot, I have created uh, a download uh, white source CLI task. And what it does is it will download the unified agent from uh, using the curl and it will transfer back to our particular repository uh, working directory. And then all I have to do is just uh, run the uh, white source using another CLI command. Uh, so using uh, the unified agent itself. And all I have to do is just uh, define the API key project name and product name likewise. So I, I have defined this API key in here because uh, also as I as I've explained earlier, you could define that in the white source config file. So in that scenario, it, I, I would not recommend for you to uh, define your API key in the white source config file because uh, it will expose to all of the developers that you are allowing uh, to. So it's not a good developer practice when it comes to that. So uh, I'm always defining the API key in the particular CLI uh, task because uh, only the uh, authorized users could use uh, access it. And uh, here comes the best practices. So uh, when you're actually initiating how to use the unified agent and you initiate in the product, uh, the white source config file, uh, it has a particular parameter to be passed uh, initially because it will actually generate the source file based, uh, the white source configuration file based on your, uh, uh, what do you call it, the uh, repository uh, source files. So in that case, if you're having a uh, JavaScript based uh, uh, software, so it will scan through that and then uh, create a white source config file based on that particular parameters that we have defined. So in the uh, in second point, I have defined that not store API key in the configuration file. So I have mentioned that in the uh, recent slide. So you can you already know what I'm going to say. So you could actually tweak the white source config file based on your actual expected result because sometimes uh, uh, nothing will be 100% uh, accurate when it comes to the uh, default, uh, default default uh, configuration. So you have to tweak it a little bit and then uh, get to know how it 
works and how what it does in the background and then you have to tweak it a little bit using uh, uh, changing the properties in the watches config file so another thing to make sure that you have the latest unified edition because i have been through so many scenarios where i have failed to download the unified uh, the latest unified edition and i just contacted the device support because of that and uh, actually you have to have the latest unified edition not like any other software you have to have it because uh, they are uh, like providing you uh, like uh, one to two times uh, uh, per month the unified agent so you have to be aware when it is released or as I've explained earlier you could use curl to download it from the github repository that they have so they are having that so you can make sure that you have the latest white unified agent in your uh, build right so if the product has lots of vulnerabilities such as more than 150 uh, vulnerabilities I would recommend it for you to try white source private rights so it's another uh, product apart from the white source core that you could actually integrate into your white source core uh, dashboard and then what it does is it will uh, use something called effective usage analysis and what it does is that uh, effective usage, usage analysis scans all of your code and then it will let uh, you know if that particular vulnerability is actually executed in your system so uh, as an example I would say that if you are using jQuery 1.11.3 it's a vulnerable uh, library as of now and uh, so if you have not ever used any of the vulnerable functionalities uh, functions I would say uh, you see in your code so it, it is actually not a vulnerability to ourselves in, uh, in terms of the uh, prioritization so in that case this comes handy this will prioritize based on the effectiveness of that particular vulnerability that they have reported so get uh, uh, just uh, you have to integrate in the virtual uh, core uh, the virtual prioritizer yes and this is the uh, most uh, interesting part for you guys because uh, since you have not experienced watches before so you could try it in your github repository so i'm going to explain how to integrate that in the next slide but for now i'll explain what is watches board so watches board is the free tool that white source uh, 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 develops and uh, all you have to do is just uh, download it in the github or the azure devops and integrate your repository into that and uh, what it does is actually uh, does uh, most of the tasks it will such, uh, such as uh, detecting the vulnerable components and detects licenses uh, on its uh, the detecting licenses are in only available in the Azure DevOps at this time. Uh, so uh, in contrast, we could say that Vices Board is free and the Vices Core is paid. So Vices Core is the thing that I've integrated earlier uh, in my slides. So don't get confused by the, the same name like white source, white source, what is this Bolt and Core. So Bolt is the free version. And uh, in the Bolt you have some constraints such as 5 scans per day per repository. So it's not good if you have enterprise level uh, repositories like uh, if you have many developers uh, committing uh, throughout the day. So when it comes to white source Core it provides unlimited scans of course it should because it is a paid product. And, uh, when it comes to watches board, it can be using GitHub and HTTP, but in, when it comes to the watches core, you could use the unified agent to run in any platform you want and you don't have any restrictions from there on. And uh, of course, the watches board detects licenses only in the HTTP. So that needs to be uh, kept, kept in mind because uh, if you're using a GitHub repository, uh, if you are integrated watches board into your GitHub repository, it won't analyze the licenses. So when it comes to watches score, it analyzes the licenses in any platform since you have the unified agent, right? So yeah. Uh, so now I'm gonna explain how you could actually integrate to uh, the white source board to the GitHub. So that's a paid product, or uh, pardon, I mean, uh, rather it's actually a free product. So uh, you could actually get that from the white source. What uh, do uh, you call GitHub Marketplace, and uh, all you have to do is just uh, go to the Marketplace and download it as uh, of another app. It's just another app you have to integrate it. Uh, so I'll explain how to do that. Well, yeah. So this is my GitHub account, and uh, if you look at the Marketplace, so I clicked on the Marketplace here. So you can search for White Source Bolt. So 
you could install that from uh, here. So I've actually installed it. That's why it uh, mentioned like uh, I've already installed it. So all you have to do is just install it uh, using this particular button. The thing is, uh, I don't have to go through the installation process as this is just another app for you to integrate. And uh, I'll explain how you could manage your settings based on the things that you are having, based on the conditions that you're having. So all you have to do is just go to the settings, your GitHub settings, and make sure uh, to go to the applications under the personal settings. Right? So as you can see, you could configure White Source Bolt app from here and then go to the bottom and then you will see that uh, what repository could be accessed from this white source board. So uh, this particular view will be there in the installation process of course uh, and uh, you could actually customize it whenever you want from coming here by coming here. So uh, actually I have just integrated into on only the selected repositories because I don't want to make it happen for the older repositories. Uh, so if you uh, if I could go to go back to my uh, GitHub uh, homepage, you can see that I have created a repository and have integrated the white source uh, uh, what do you call the bolt itself to this particular repository. And uh, upon uh, integrating to a repository, it will uh, make an initial pull request uh, to. Uh, actually include this particular dot white source config file. So that means uh, you could, uh, uh, once this is integrated, it will start to scan whenever you push something into the uh, white source, uh, the repository itself. So in this case, there is something called in the under the white source uh, config file. In the bolt, uh, you have uh, uh, something called uh, vulnerable check run conclusion level. So it means that uh, I have, you could actually define whether it's failure or success, uh, either of the values. So I have just defined failure and it comes as default as well. Uh, because uh, if uh, something happens, if the uh, scanning fails because of the fact that if the virus uh, has found a vulnerability, so it will uh, not uh, uh, any uh, user to actually merge that particular pull request because of the fact that uh, it has some vulnerabilities. So unless you are an uh, administrator, you couldn't actually uh, go through that step. So this is very uh, useful. Uh, if you don't want to make any restrictions, you could say success, and every uh, scanning will be success, in, uh, even though that they have uh, uh, just uh, scanned for any vulnerabilities and found any vulnerabilities. So, uh, so I have defined uh, low and min minimum security, uh, security accessibility level because of the fact that I have to, it will inform me every time whether it has found any vulnerabilities regardless of its severity. So in the, any low, medium or high priority cases will be reported back to, uh, back in the issues in here. So you could define low, medium or high in here based on your own requirement. If you defi define high in this particular uh, property, you will, you will get uh, only the high severity vulnerabilities uh, as the issues. So if you go to the issues, so I've already made a commit and uh, as you can see there are so many vulnerabilities that it has been reported here. So that's very descriptive, all you have to do is just go to that particular, click on that particular issue and then you will see that the vulnerability library and uh, the vulnerability details as well as the CSS, CDS score and the suggested fix. So that this is the best thing that you could ever do because the suggested fix is very convenient you to have. Because the developers can do a uh, look for the actual fix. So this is very reliable and uh, this is very useful for you to try, right? So that's it guys. Uh, of course, you could uninstall this app whenever you want.